worship. Praise be to you, Lord, from everlasting to everlasting. Yours, Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor for everything in heaven and earth is yours. Yours, Lord, is the kingdom. You are exalted as head over all. Wealth and honor come from you. You are the ruler of all things. In your hands are strength and power to exalt and give strength to all. And now, our God, we give you thanks and praise your glorious name. This time we'll invite our deacons to come to light the candles to remind us of the presence of God while we worship our praise hymn this morning is number 22. Bless his holy name. Let's sing together. seated. Our worship hymn this morning is number 454, God our Father you have led us. We'll sing the first and last verse together. <clears throat> Yeah. 
Let's read together from the Word of God. Our reading this morning is entitled, The Glory of God, God the Father. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou grace the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our offertory hymn this morning is 607, Something for Thee. We'll sing the first and last together. This time we invite our ushers to come as we receive our tithes and offerings. And we're going to sing as we take these this morning, number 31. Words will be on the screen. Sing with me, and when we receive them, we'll offer praises as we present them to the Lord. We'll do this a cappella. Is that okay? Did you want to play it? You look so disappointed. You okay? Okay. Praise Him, praise Him, all ye little children. God is love, God is love. Praise Him, praise Him, all ye little children. God is love, God is love. Love Him, love Him, all ye little children. God is love, God is love. Love Him, love Him, all ye little children. God is love, God is love. Thank Him, thank Him, all ye little children. God is love, God is love. Thank Him, thank Him, all ye little children. God is love, God is love. Well, let's stand together and worship as we present our offerings to the Lord. Sing with me, praise ye the name of the Lord. Stand together. Praise ye the name of the Lord of hosts. Praise Him, praise Him, all ye people. Oh 
prayers, we dedicate these to the Lord. Uh, Brother Tate Adams, will you lead us? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this day, Lord. We thank you for and, and for all that uh, you bless us with, dear Lord. And we just ask that uh, you give help us to give back a portion of what you give to us. We know that you're the owner of all, and that uh, what we have is is, is yours. And that uh, we just ask that uh, we use our gifts to help those that uh, are in need, dear Lord, and to further this King, your kingdom. We say these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, and you may be seated. We're going to sing our prayer hymn now, number 66, Day by Day. At the end of that prayer hymn, uh, Brother Barry Fryman is going to come and share with you or some missionaries that we want to pray for. Our prayer response will be, Almighty Father, hear our prayer. Okay. Number 66. <laughs> day by day, and with each passing moment, strength I find. To meet my trials here, trusting in my Father's wife restorement, I have no cause for worry or for fear. He whose heart is kind beyond all measures gives unto each day what he seems best. Lovingly, it's part of pain and pleasure, mingling toil with peace and rest. Help me then in every tribulation, so to trust thy promises, O Lord, that I lose not faith's sweet consolation. Offered me within thy holy word. Help me, Lord, when toil and trouble meet ever to taste of the Father's hand. One by one, the days, the moments fleeting, till I reach the promise. Good morning again. At this time we want to take a moment and, and pray for those missionaries that are out uh, doing God's will, uh, some of them in harm's way of course. Uh, we just want to take a moment to reflect and, and wish these people safety and, and, uh, and that the Lord is out there preparing hearts before them. But our International Mission Board uh, missionary this morning is Ted Holmes who serves in Poland and our North American Mission Board missionaries are Ken and Elijah Loveless who serve in the church as church planters in St. Louis. Pray with me. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you this morning lifting up these missionaries, Lord, uh, these specifically and also the Lord, those that are out there doing your uh, work on a daily basis. Lord, we, we know that uh, times are tough a lot of times for these missionaries being away from their family. Lord, they're in areas that are foreign to them. Lord, and just ask that you protect them and, and protect, protect those that work with them. Lord, preparing the hearts of those that they'll be in contact with. Lord, there's work for us here as missionaries here in Owensville, Kentucky. Lord, uh, I just ask that you would work through us to reach out to those that may, may not know you as their Lord and Savior. Lord, there may be friends and family. Lord, we know that uh, sometimes it's the hardest ones to reach out to. But Lord, just work through us that uh, if they do not know you as their Lord and Savior, that uh, maybe today would be that day. Lord, just be with us as we continue into your service. Which in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Almighty Father, hear our prayer.
Well, now as our choir work their way back to their seats, we invite Wendell Moore to come and share with you our morning announcements, and I need some help this morning. Gabrielle? Gabrielle. Shade, can you come help us with these devotions? If you would, just follow along with me in your bulletin for the announcements. Today's opportunities, uh, the children's choir will practice at 12.15 uh, immediately after uh, morning service. At 4 o'clock we have e-club at the Emanuel Center. At 6.30 we have discipleship training here. And at 7.30 current worship at the Emanuel Center. And tonight's guest worshipers, lead worshipers are Sean Bailey and Brock Baber from Owensville Christian Church. Some upcoming events, uh, January 31st, uh, we have our Singspiration at our 6 p.m. Uh, service, and at, on February the 3rd, our nursing home ministry at Ridgeway at, at 6 p.m. Uh, on February the 14th, we have uh, our Valentine lunch, and that'll be at uh, 12 p.m. after the morning worship. And if you're on a committee, you'll see uh, the dates that you meet there in the times choir uh, you see your schedule on there for the january 31st and february the 7th uh, last sunday evening congratulations to greg likens he again won uh, the title of brotherhood cook-off uh, champion and uh, the brotherhood raised 273 dollars for some of their minister minister ministering work and the pastor would like to thank the two or three who cast a vote for his entry. <laughs> we don't know who they are, but thanks anyway. Also, we are sending one calls almost daily, and if you are not receiving these, please let the pastor know. And on the back, you'll see uh, uh, prayer notes. Some people that were mentioned in our services last week that uh, that were new to us, and then. In the foyer, you will sign up, see a sign-up sheet for a manual center cleanup, a prayer box, a list of prayer concerns from our last four weeks, a church calendar, and a sign-up sheet for special music. Any other announcements? If not, thank you. Stand with me as we do our praise songs this morning. I'll get the kids up here in just a minute. They, they don't know this first one, uh, but they'll come help me the second one. Let's see Walker, he's ready to go. I like that. It's new. I, some of you, I hope you know it. Let our praise be your welcome. Let our songs be a sign. We are here for you. We are here for you. your breath come from heaven fill our hearts with your love we are here for you we are here for you to you our hearts are open nothing here is hidden you are our one desire you alone are holy Let your fire fall down Let our shout be your anthem Your renown fill the skies We are here for you We are here for you Let your word move in power Let what's dead we are here for you We are here for you To you our hearts are open Nothing here is here You are our one desire You alone are holy Only you are worthy God let your fire fall down our hearts are open and nothing here is hidden. You are our one desire. 
You alone are holy, only you are worthy. God, let your fire fall down. We welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise. Almighty God of love, be welcomed in this place. We welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise. Almighty God of love, be welcomed in this place. Let every heart adore. Let every soul away. Almighty God of love, be welcomed in this place. We welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise. Almighty God of love, be welcomed in this place. All right, Walker, come on up wherever you are. Come on, Shade. Gabrielle, you gonna sing with us? Those of you visiting with us, Walker is our lead dancer too. <laughs>
The way we worship here is a little different than a lot of churches. We, we start out very formal and very focused on God. and We don't uh, come in and talk about the weather or what's going on. We try to be really focused on God and then eventually we move into a more casual kind of worship and we're getting there right now. So this morning if you come to worship with us and they say, well they didn't even say hello to us. Well we're saying hello now. Because we wanted to say hello to God first. Okay? I hope you understand that. So we have some visitors with us. We're tickled to death you're here. Um, uh, we, we even have Brother Ron from next door. If I knew you were coming I'd have Put you right up. No, I wouldn't have, no. <laughs> Brother Ron and his family here from the Methodist Church. Now we have also with us our director of missions okay. uh, and his wife. And you're going to come and sing for us, are you? Sure. I want you to, yeah, if you will. Yeah. Dwayne and Emily Slusher. And it's time for that now if you want to get your guitar ready. I'll keep talking while you get ready. And some of you are here because your church got snowed out. And uh, we're, we're tickled that you could be here with us. Um, we, uh, we believe very much that uh, there are many good churches in our community, and I'm sure you come from some of those very good churches, and we're glad you're here today. We don't expect you to be here every Sunday, but any time it snows and you don't have church, we're so glad you're here with us. And in the meantime, we'll pray for your church, and you pray for ours, because we're working on the same thing, trying to reach the lost and edify those who are uh, saved. So. So, children, downstairs, yeah. Children, you can go downstairs. I didn't say that. Oh, children's message. I skipped it, didn't I? Yeah, I'm rattled this morning. I'm sorry. We'll do the special music, then we'll do the children's choir, okay? All right. A uh, children's message, rather. Thank you. I'll pick you up that microphone will do the kids talk to you. I don't know if I can follow those kiddos. They're really, really good. Really good. That's how I got my start too. So you guys keep on singing. All right. uh, if you know this song, feel free to sing along because I, I like to lead worship more than I do do a special. So join right in there and sing with me if you know it.
Thank you very much. That's a good song. We sing that at Current uh, every now and then, so uh, we like that one. Now, children's message. Let's come over here to this side right here and get on the front seat for just a moment. I hope I've got enough children's uh, bulletins with me because we've got a lot of extras this morning. Good morning. Howdy. Where have you been? I've missed you at E Club. You doing okay? You brought your mom with you today, didn't you? And your sister? And your other sister? Now, I'll tell you about these two girls here. One came to Bible school and the other one didn't. The little one came to Bible school. And then the big one came to E Club. And they looked so much alike. It had been like two months. And when she came in, she was like a foot taller. I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> this baby's growing, you know. I'll get you this. All right. The Bible tells us the first time that Jesus preached in his hometown at a place called Nazareth, he got up and he read from a passage of Scripture. And in that Scripture... Isaiah the prophet said that God would send someone special who would preach freedom to those who are captive and healing to those who are sick and eyesight for those who are blind. And when Jesus read that, you know what he said? He said, that's why I'm here. That's why I'm here. Now, if you look at this bulletin right on the front, it says, just what the doctor ordered. You know what that means? That means Jesus is just what we need. All right. Now, what do we need Jesus for? What's the main thing we need? Yeah, for him to wash our sins away. That's a good answer. You didn't seem very confident, but you nailed it. That's good. Good answer. You weren't sure, but it just that's what you gotta do sometimes. Just keep pushing it. Yeah. We need Jesus to save us from our sins, don't we? All right. Can you remember that? Yeah. Alright, let's have prayer. Dear God, thank you so much for Jesus. And he is just what we need. We praise you for sending him to us. Father, we pray for these children that they would remember that. It would become the most important thing to them and they'd never forget. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right? Now get out of here. Go downstairs. Be good. Here you go. I've got one for you. If you have your Bibles, am I miss have I skipped anything else? Right, we're on all right, we're on schedule again. First Corinthians chapter twelve. And there's a misprint in the book. Well, do you have twenty through thirty one? I've got twelve through thirty one on my notes up here. Twelve? Ah, oh, I'll tell you. I think if I start with verse twelve, the sermon's gonna be a lot longer. So I'm gonna start with twenty. That be okay? <laughs> if you're using a pew Bible, tell me what page you're on. Anybody using a Bible in the pew? 1782? 6, 1786? Cluttered desk, cluttered mind. That's what they say. What's cluttered pulpit mean? I think we know, don't we? Started to tell you, I broke a guitar string. Now, that's a 12 string, so it doesn't make a huge difference. But I broke a guitar string, forgot to fix it. And I started to say I'm playing one string shy of a full set, but then I thought somebody might amen that because that seems to have two meanings, doesn't it? <laughs> you know, like he's always playing one string shy of a full set. Okay, 1 Corinthians 12, starting with verse... 20. Would you stand with me as we read from God's Word? We stand to honor the Word of God. As it is, there are many parts but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. 
And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty, while our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has combined the members of the body and has given greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now, you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. And in the church, God has appointed first of all apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then workers of miracles, also those having gifts of healing, those able to help others, those with gifts of administration, and those speaking in different kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? But eagerly desire the greater gifts. And now I will show you the most excellent way. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be unto God. We praise you for your word, Father. Speak to our hearts and minds now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, and you may be seated. Yeah, we are really glad you're here if you're visiting with us this morning. Uh, Dwayne and Emily came all the way from uh, Maysville. That should shame these people who could have been here this morning. You know, you just don't know what to do, do you, when it's, it's the, the weather's been horrible and the temperature. When I woke up this morning at 6, it was 2 degrees. At seven, it was one degree. I thought, that's not good. It's getting colder, you know. But when I got here at nine o'clock, it was already 16. And it feels like summer out there now, doesn't it? So I'm glad we decided to have church and uh, glad you're here visiting with us. And you guys have tried to make it two or three weeks now, haven't you? Weather knocked you out one week and then something came up. So I'm glad you made it. And you, she needs to be on your resume if if she's not, okay, okay, because she's a great asset to you, you know, just put a little video, audio tape there, this is my wife, by the way, that'll get you the job, okay? Okay, last week, I mentioned to you about a, I mentioned to you a conversation I'd had with someone about an article, there was an article that talked about why people are leaving the church, okay, leaving the church but not leaving the faith. There's two big things going on right now. There was a big survey that came out not too long ago that pointed out that the like 7% drop in the number of people who claim to be Christian and now claim to be atheists. You know, that's, that's a big issue. But this is not the same thing. We're talking about people who don't go to church anymore, okay? But they still claim to be Christian, right? And so the, there's all these articles, and if you get on Facebook, you can learn so much, because everything on Facebook is true, okay? <laughs> and you can learn so much, and there's so many articles out there about why this is happening. And, and right away, I began to feel something, you know, like, this is not a statement of fact. These are people sharing their opinions, okay? So one article I you know, read said it's all about the music. People are dissatisfied with the music. There are people who are dissatisfied because the music is old and people are dissatisfied because that new music, you know. And people are upset because of the preaching. I can't imagine that to be true, can you? No, no. All kinds of reasons. And then I had this idea. Why don't we ask the people why they stopped going to church? Wouldn't that be the best way to find out instead of guessing? Because the fact of the matter is, those who complain about the old music don't like the old music. Those who complain about the new music just don't like it. It's not a matter of fact, it's just a matter of opinion. Those who really like in-depth Bible study say that's the reason because that's what they like. So they did a survey and the answer was, does anybody remember from last week why people stopped going to church? Too busy. Got other things they'd rather do. We kind of knew that, didn't we? Wrong priorities. Do any of you remember what the second reason was? The number two reason? Got their feelings hurt at church. Can you imagine that? I can't imagine that. People get hurt at church. This is the best place in the world, isn't it? Nobody's ever mean in church. Nobody said amen. Okay. <laughs> so it must be that it's true. People are mean in church. Here's the thing that's so interesting to me, is that when I preach, I, I never pick out a topic, okay? I follow the lectionary, and if you don't know what that is, Ron can tell you, because he's Methodist, and they're very big into the lectionary, aren't they? 
basically there's a set of scriptures that you follow and and so I, I I'm compelled to preach something that maybe I wasn't on my mind you know but I've been so tickled for the last two weeks it's just been spot on what I wanted to say was last week we talked about how if people are not going to church because they've got other priorities we need to make sure they hear the message of how important it is to follow Christ and, and I pointed out to you, and I don't know if you remember or not, but that, that our world has become such an immediate gratification-oriented society, which means basically we like the microwave better than the oven. You know what I'm saying? We want it now. We like fast food better than sit down and wait 20 minutes for somebody to prepare something home-cooked, right? So when you tell these people that, listen, when you die, you can go to heaven or you can go to hell, it doesn't really sink in because that's a long way off. I want to know what's going on right now in my life. So the message was last week, how much richer life is when you have Christ. Okay? And then this week, when we talk about how important it is to be good people to one another in church, look at the scripture that the lectionary threw out there about the relationship in the church. If you go back to verse 20, it says there are many parts, but there's one body. And verse 27 says you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it all, saying, look, we're diverse, there's many of us, but we've got one thing that joins us together, and that's Christ. So let's dig a little deeper and see what that means. First of all, if you go to verse 21, it says the eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you, and the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. Those are rhetorical questions, and obviously our hands don't talk to our feet and our eyes to our ears and all that. He's making a point. The point is, is that every part of the body needs each other, and in the church, every single one of us need each other. And it's interesting, Ron, that you're here today because we Baptists need you Methodist, and you Methodists need us Baptists, and we need the Church of God and the Christian Church and the Church of Christ because we're all in this together. Amen. All right? So when I thought about this message, I thought this is a message for the church and then all these, golly, we got Sophie and Gay out there from the Church of God in here this morning and the uh, Carmen's from the Christian Church and the Methodist Church is here this morning. Anybody got another denomination here? Good, that's enough. Too many ingredients. It gets complicated, you know. But it's very relevant for we are all part of the body of Christ and we need each other. We need each other to get the work done. I, you know, I would it, it, already at this church as we plan to do things. We don't plan based on how much money or resources we have. We look out into the community and you see what's broken. You know, that's what we're thinking about. What's wrong? What do we need to be doing? And if you were to tell me that this is the only church in town that's out there to do what needs to be done, it would be very frightening. Because even with all of our churches working together, we're still falling behind, you know? And the thought that we had to get it all done by ourselves would be very frightening. When we thought about having church today, I thought, well, you know, let's just do this. And then I thought, as I made the announcement, what about E-Club? E-Club meets at 4 o'clock down at the manual building. And it's, for those of you who don't know, it's like Bible school every week. And we have kids who come there who come from... Uh, foster care and rough homes and there was no thought because we have children who come to e-club who haven't eaten in two days okay when school's going on and school hasn't met all week we're gonna have kids down there today if all we do is go down there and fix them something to eat it's time well spent that's how much need there is in our community and you know how far the houses are where these children live? A quarter mile from our church? They're here, they're close. A lot of work out there to do. And we need each other to get this work done. We need each other to grow. Uh, well, I wish Nyan was here. Jim Vickers used to tell a story about a, a stalk of corn that he saw growing on top of a hill. He said it was beautiful and rich. It was all by itself. There was nothing to compete with. And when he went up there to, to harvest the ear, it was bare. Because on its own, it couldn't grow. And Mike and Mary could probably tell you all about wind pollination and all that, but it needed others to grow. We need each other 
to grow. I'm not going to grow as a Christian without you, as I should. And we need each other to glorify God. We need each other to glorify God. There was a story in the news this week about a woman who was, uh, she's, she'd been living as a hermit for the last 28 years all alone in the Siberian wilderness. Can you imagine that? The temperatures there get down to 40 below zero. And in the 1970s, some geologists had flown over by helicopter and noticed this little house and they stopped in and one of them actually befriended her. What had happened is back in the uh, time of persecution, back before World War II, her and her family had fled the Stalinist regime because they were persecuted. They were part of a group called the Old Believers. It was a sect off of the Russian Orthodox Church and they had fled and moved out there and this father and mother had four children and they had all died but her now. She was there and she'd been there by herself for 28 years. And when these geologists met her, they befriended her and actually left her a satellite phone. Can you imagine living off the land by yourself your whole life? She's in her 70s now. And she woke up one day with great pain in her leg. And she picked up that satellite phone and they sent a helicopter and flew her 600 miles to the hospital. Can you imagine what a shock that was to have never seen anything like that on television or anything, and now to be riding a helicopter for 600 miles. It's almost like there was a message in that, that you think you can live alone and be alone and by yourself, but at some point, you need each other. At some point, you're going to need someone to be there for you. Sometimes Christians think we can stand, this, stand on our own, and we forget that we need each other. And I hope and pray for you that it's not a time of crisis where you realize, I need other Christians. Okay? Let's be aware. We need each other. If you look around this room, these people you see this morning, you need them. This isn't optional. This isn't a luxury. This is a necessity. And we need to care about each other. And churches in this community, we need to work hard together to care for one another and care for each other's churches. Ron can tell you, we have ministerial meetings. We'll have four or five show up out of 52 churches. You know who's harder to get to church than people? The preachers. Yeah. And by the way, uh, they have meetings and I never go. I need to explain. <laughs> we always meet, ministerial meeting meets when the, when the Bracken Baptist meet. Sorry. I'm, I'm president of the minister. I have to go to that meeting, right, Ron? Okay. All right. We need to be active and intentional and working in each other's lives because we need each other. And I just want to ask you this morning, is that the way you feel? Do you feel like you need these people? Do you feel like these people need you? Because that's where we're supposed to be. If you go back to the scriptures, verses 22 through 26, Paul gives this illustration about the body parts and those things that we think are less honorable need to be treated a special way but the bottom line he's saying in verse 26 if one part suffers every part suffers with it if one part is honored every part rejoices with it because everybody matters everybody matters verse 25 so there's, there should be no division in the body but that each that its parts should have equal what concern for each other the word for concern comes to us from a greek word which means divided you know, well, what's that mean? It means that what are divided or distracted. And what he's saying is, is that people matter so much to you that it distracts you from your life and draws you in and say, this person matters. Okay? When your church, when the church is what it is supposed to be to you, you are pulled from your own life and pulled into that to say, because I care about what's going on in this church. Well, I care about people's well-being, care about people's spiritual well-being, care about whether they're growing and being productive. Did, did you all see on the news the other day in New York where a cow had gotten loose and was running down the streets of New York? It had escaped. Did anybody see this besides me and Kim? You saw it? Yeah. Did, I didn't know they had slaughterhouses in New York, did you? I just thought we had that here in Kentucky. I thought we shipped all our beef up there. A slaughterhouse in New York City. But it got loose and it started running down the streets. Did you hear what happened to it? Have you heard? Do you want to know? No, it didn't get run over. That was a good guess. They caught it, though. They did catch it. Doesn't sound good, does it? They had escaped from the slaughterhouse, after all. 
But the founder of Skylands Animal Sanctuary bought the cow. And now the cow, whose name is Freddie, lives a life of leisure being cared for alongside her cow friends. Named her Freddie after Freddie Mercury of the rock group Queen. I don't know why, do you? But I thought it interesting that people could be so compassionate and caring about a, a cow running down the streets of New York that they would stop and invest, buy, take it to a vet, get it taken care of, ship it to an animal sanctuary and care for it for the rest of its life. That's what Mary and Mike are doing. They've got all kinds of cows out there. They're just taking care of them for the rest of their lives. Why can't we be that caring and compassionate about each other? Why can't we see each other in need? Can you imagine the fear in this animal? It's running from the slaughterhouse. I don't know how intelligent it is, but I imagine when you walk in there and you smell, you think, this is not a good place, you know? And that's probably what caused her to bolt. The fear and the terror. We see people all the time struggling. People who are struggling with physical needs and spiritual needs, and we need to stop and care enough to invest ourselves in them. Church is not a Sunday-only occupation for us. It's not, we don't do church so we can come here on Sundays and sing to God and go home and feel good about ourselves. It's a fully invested way of life to be a Christian. These people you see around you, they're not your friends. They're not your family. They're part of the same body. That's a whole lot more commitment. We, we like to talk about the church being a family. Well, we're like, oh, yeah, that makes us care about each other. Let me tell you something. There's nothing tighter than your own body that you would care for. You ever have a hangnail? Messes up your whole day, doesn't it? Hmm? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? If there's a little hurt in the church, it should impact all of us. And there's more. We'll go back to the scripture one more time. Verses 28 through 30. He starts asking these questions, you know. Is, is, is everybody an apostle? Is everybody a prophet? Everybody a teacher? And what he's saying is we all have different roles, different gifts, different things we bring to it. And we're not all the same we don't all have the same purpose. And when your church is what it's supposed to be to you, you'll find that you have a role and a purpose in that church that you're supposed to be filling. Your role matters. When you're not there, it hurts your church. And I don't mean there for Sunday, I mean there for the church. And when others don't matter to you, it has great impact on the church. God has a plan. He puts us in our place. He gives us gifts to do the things we're supposed to do. It matters. It matters. And what you do or don't do matters. Now, I don't know what role God has given you. I don't think we have any apostles here or prophets. Maybe we do. I don't know. I don't know what gifts you have. But if you have a gift, you need to use it. Now, I put a sign-up sheet back there in the foyer for special music, and it goes unsigned week after week after week. And we got some people here who can sing, don't we? Shame on you. Sign up. Do your part. I shared with you before, a couple years ago, the Bronx Zoo in New York has a, has a promotional thing to do around Valentine's Day. And what you can do is you can go in and for your sweetheart, you can name a, uh, a cockroach after her, okay? Cockroach. How many of you men think that's going to fly at the house? You go home, listen, dear, you know the candy, the flowers? No, but I got a cockroach. It's got your name on it. Yeah. Another zoo has got the same idea, except a little bit different. The zoo is in San Diego. They say, you come in here, and we'll let you name your ex-sweetheart. Name a cockroach after your ex, sweetheart. Now, I think that would work, wouldn't it? Yeah. But somebody wrote an article about this thing. Said, you know, you don't get it. Cockroaches are very important. They, they're, they're strong, independent. The females in the cockroach family are very strong and independent. So it's a compliment to be named after a cockroach. I don't know. But then he said, do people realize that cockroaches play a role in our world? They're recyclers. That if we did not have the cockroaches, like the buzzards or the catfish, what our world would do, it would just pile up. It has a purpose. It has a role. Sometimes we look at ourselves in the midst of God's work and we think, I don't know really what I contribute. 
God hasn't made anything meaningless. Even cockroaches have a purpose. You have a purpose. You have a place. You have a role. You have something to do. And you have something to do in the church and in your church. So I encourage you today to find your role. And find the roles of others and encourage them and support them. And understand that we're all in this together, working together for the glory of God. Now go with me as we conclude to the last verse. He says, eagerly desire the greater gifts. He says, all right, so you find your place. Know everybody matters. Everybody's important. We're all in this together. But don't just be satisfied with where you are. Desire more. Want more. Grow. And when he concludes this verse, he says, and I'll show you the most excellent way, and we're not going to get into chapter 13, but you're all familiar with it. He says, let it be driven by love. And that's where we're supposed to be. What I encourage you to do this morning, just ask yourself this. Are you so devoted to your church that you need it? That you need your church? Do you view everyone as though each and every person here really matters? Are you seeking what your role should be in supporting others as they do the role? Do you want to grow and do more? Do you deeply value your church? Now, Paul says, desire the greater gifts. You don't fall in love with the church. You desire it. it requires intention. It's not going to happen to you automatically. You've got to decide, I want more. Do you want more? Let's bow for prayer. Father, we thank you so much that you've put us in this place with purpose and meaning. We thank you so much for those who are around us who make our lives richer and help us to grow and help us to glorify you. Father, we pray this morning that everyone who is here would desire to grow and be more to their church, whatever church that may be, and to the body of Christ. Father, if there's someone here who has a decision to make or to share, we ask that you speak to their heart. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Stand with us now as we sing our invitation hymn. Come, let us reason, number 313. If you have a decision to make or share, we'll be here to pray with you.
you. Would you take your seats for just a moment? Um, good news to share with you this morning. Um, we uh, want to welcome to our church, our church family. We talked about how important the church body was. Uh, we're growing and we have two more who are coming this morning to move their membership here and we're excited about that. Uh, David and Margaret, would you come up for us? No, she looked at me surprised. I didn't mean to surprise you. They've come to move their membership to our, our fellowship from um, Russell Baptist Church. Yeah. Would you welcome them with a big amen? amen. Who, who doesn't want them here? Ah, unanimous. Congratulations. So, uh, they've been part of our family here for a while. And we're tickled to death they're coming. They stopped by to see, uh, was it Thursday? One day, yeah. They, and they bring great gifts with them. So I'm going to ask them if they'll stay up here so you can come by and welcome them. For those of you who are visiting with us, thank you so much for coming to visit with us today. Uh, uh, if we're better than your church, you can come back. Okay. <laughs> We won't tell him. Just kidding. We will pray for your church. Stand together now for our benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. This time we'll ask our uh, uh, deacons to come and they'll extinguish the candles that remind us of the presence of God. But take that presence, that power, that light of Christ with you as we leave this place. Brother Wendell Moore, will you lead us in our closing prayer? Father, we thank you for this day and for this message, and we are truly thankful that we could be here today to, to fellowship with fellow Christians and to be able to hear your word with them. We are truly thankful again for the decisions that are made, and we ask again that you would bless this church continue to be with us in all that we do. In your son's name. Amen. Amen. Let's sing our parting hymn, and then we'll ask the Tavises to come up here so you can welcome them to our church. May God's grace go before you. May His love enfold you. May His mighty arms uphold you, protect you till we meet again. Go with God. God bless you.